first of the Yashica Electros were built in the mid-1960s with other models such as the GSN being built later. What was so great about this rangefinder for its time was it was suited for filthy casual photographers by using a metering system called Aperture Priority to where you could essentially set the ASA or ISO for the digital users, uh, the film on top, set the aperture on the front and half press the shutter button and it will give you a reading on either the top panel or inside the VF via orange red light. Throughout the years, not much had changed for the Electro series specification wise, except the ASA dials setting going from 12 to 500 ASA to 25 to 1000 ASA. A major change if you're for some reason shooting sports on a rangefinder. Production ended on the Electro in the mid 1970s with a little under 10 distinguishable models being manufactured. So this, everyone, is the YE35. Beautiful. So going over to the back, we see the battery check, which when I press it turns green. If the light doesn't ignite the night, then don't give up, my dude. I'll tell you why in a second. So after I get the camera into focus, because AF is for chumps, we see the top panel of the camera. That is the ASA dial where you set your film speed. As I am demonstrating now is the metering system. Red means you're overexposing and your portrait is going to turn out like crap unless it's portrait 160. And once I figure out this isn't a TTL metered camera, we'll know the orange essentially means you're about to underexpose, and it will make up for that by switching to bulb. And... Let's see if I can figure it out. Alright, and there we are. This is the cold shoe mount, and the PC socket is over here on the left. Here is the rewind knob, but before doing that you need to press the nipple on the bottom in order for the mechanics inside to allow you to do so. I have a fun story on that, we'll get to that later. So going kind of fast, the lens is a 45mm 1.7 machine on with the closest focusing distance of 0.8 meters, or to Americans like me, 3 feet, all the way to infinity. There are three exposure modes on the very front that read out as bulb, auto, and flash. And speaking of the flash, since this is a couple electric step with shutter we're talking about here, you get flash sync at all speeds. Nothing really significant inside the camera other than to show off the inner workings and film rails, I suppose. I mean, what the hell. Of course, there is the ASA slash DIN diagram. I forget the correlation between the two. Pressure plate, and yeah, that. So, going back to the front, we see the metering system in sweet action. Remember not to cover this up if you're out shooting because you may end up getting an inaccurate reading. One of these days I will do an in-depth review on rangefinder focusing, but for now, here's an out-of-place shot of what it looks like through the Y35s. Can't see the patch, but it is there. So now to the bottom where we see the standard tripod mount. Over to the right is the battery compartment where you can buy a mod or make your own because for some weird reason mercury batteries are completely outlawed. And there you go the Y35 in a nutshell. Here are some lightly edited samples. Aside from specs, what do I think of this? Well, the Ishika Electro is a really good camera to start off with. I mean, this is pretty much what got me into the film. Um, I got this a really long time ago, back in 2014, for Easter. And my parents, I just, I told them, I said, yo, I want to get into film. And I saw this neato camera down the road at George's, RIP George, his store, not him, but I told him, I mean, I told them, I said, hey, 
I saw this neat camera, a neat rangefinder, and I wanted to get into film, and do you think maybe, maybe I could see it for Easter? And they were like, maybe. And then I woke up, I saw it in the case, and I just, I jumped for joy. I hopped for joy. For Easter. And ever since then, it's been treating me pretty damn well. I mean, from then till now, I mean, I know it hasn't been long, but I've picked up a lot of skills along the way, and those skills, well, they pretty much involve shooting with the exposure triangle or whatever, and just learning that. So, in essence, I didn't really need to just set these to the specific modes in order to get my exposure via aperture and ISO. So, you know, it kind of just turned into just not really a guessing game anymore, but me just knowing what's going to come out in the end, you know, if that makes any sense and whatever the hell I dispute at you. So, really, what do I think of this camera overall? I mean, it's good. It's good for someone learning. And it's good for somebody who just wants something to take out and mess about with. But if you're looking for more manual control, look for a different rangefinder because there's tons of them out there. This is good, but if you just need something that we're all you really need to do is set the aperture, if you need to play around with the bulb, then you know this is this is a pretty good camera. But I wouldn't say go for all this completely only because there's two two well really one and there's one main issue that i have with this camera and that's its size i mean this is big for a rangefinder and i guess it has to do with this being one of the first electronic rangefinders where you could pretty much figure out your exposure via lights on top of the camera but i mean it's big it's just big for what it is. I mean, I've seen bigger, and that relates to a lot of things, but, um, it's just big for what it is. And, that's, that's good if you want to be noticed, but it's bad that if you're shooting on the street, and you come across a really cool subject, and you figure out that it's like a kung fu midget, and you shoot it thinking it's a kid that's not going to fight back, then well, you know, you're going to you're, you're fucked. <laughs> so, yeah, a big, big problem with it is that it's big. Second, this really isn't that big of an issue, but, I mean, you need mods for the battery on the bottom, like I've already said, but, I mean, they're easy to find. I use, it, um, I use a mod with a PX28 battery, and, you know, that works fine, but you can use wristwatch batteries, too. And those will work just the same. If you're very handy, though, that's the thing. I just, I, I'm, a, I'm a cheap ass. I just went on eBay and bought them hot. So, I mean, that's been working for me pretty well. Ooh, what the fuck? But anyway, um, overall, I think it's a good camera for beginners. If you're out there and you're like 15, 16, you're like, I want to get into, I want to get into film, then, you know, that's a good thing to start off with. And you know, hey, if you don't want to learn outside of um, the uh, the exposure triangle, like I've said, um, you know, you can just use this for all your life, never know anything, and that's fine too. I mean, everyone everyone goes about their business a different way. But anyway, that's the video, guys. I'm Bailey. This is the Most Sex Channel, and if you like it, you know, come back. I probably won't be as awkward next time because uh, it's my first video. But anyway, um. You know, see you guys later.